Welcome to the abortion rights campaign, March for Choice 2018. Good March. Uh, thank you for coming. And um, because a lot of people said we were done, we're finished, we repealed the eighth. Because we did, we repealed the eighth. You repealed the eighth. And with that, you gave a very strong message to everyone in power that Ireland won't wait. We will always mobilize from now on. That's the way it's going to be done. And there might be <laughs> there might be some baton passing. Some of us might have passed out under a truck. Um, that might be just me. Um, but uh, I just wanted to say it was brilliant the way you were so loud, so proud coming up here. But I would just warn you, don't be too shrill. You're not doing your side any favours. Just be careful. <laughs> be careful of that. You might lose. But we're not there yet, as we know. And that's why we're here today. It's amazing so many of you are here today. Because we need the right legislation. We need the right access. We can't leave anyone behind. That's how this campaign was run. And we're going to continue. Would you look who I have here? It's only from ISL, our interpreters. We have Lisa Dunn and Bernadette Ferguson. Lisa has gone so far as to have the letters ISL in her name. Bernadette, it's time to up your game. Ooh. <laughs> I'm turning into a parrot. <laughs> it's amazing. I've absolutely lost my mind over the summer, but I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. We have some amazing speakers for you. But I did just want to emphasize that. We, we repeal the eight, all of us together. So this is not, I want to really thank the abortion rights campaign. We've kept all this going over the summer. They've organized this march. They're still campaigning and putting on the pressure on legislation. And like we said last year, this is not a sprint, it's not a marathon, it's a relay. You have to do your part, so please do. Now, I'm going to do my part by getting off the stage and butting out, uh, because we have some incredible speakers. Are you ready for your first incredible speakers? I thought you might be. And then you'll all go for a pint if I know you well. Uh, so the abortion rights campaign, co-convener Sarah Monaghan and Denny O'Toole, Sarah was appointed co-convener of the abortion rights campaign in November 2017. I'm just going to rattle through her bio, though they've done an incredible amount. This is really overachievers' corner here. This is this whole day of speakers. Following four years of volunteer work with the campaign, where she was responsible for regional support and working with a network of regional art groups across the country. Denny is a North County Dublin woman who now lives in Sligo. Through travelling by ferry to the UK from the Northwest 20 years ago to access abortion services, she understands firsthand the trauma and stigma women face and the added barriers for rural women. In 2015, she founded Sligo ARC. She was elected co-convener of ARC in 2018 and was also a founder and main activist with Sligo Together for Yes. Please put your hands together for Sarah Monaghan and Denny O'Toole. My name is Sarah Monaghan, and I am one of the co-conveners of the Abortion Rights Campaign. <laughs> Myself and Denise are so honoured to stand here today with all of you. Earlier this year, you repealed the Eighth Amendment. You had the difficult conversations, knocked on doors, stuffed flyers through letterboxes, filled car booths with merchandise, watched posters like hawks, gave interviews, had supposed balanced debates, compromised, held your tongue, donated money, hauled kids, balanced work, abandoned partners, put your entire life on hold. You, you repealed the eighth. You changed the face of history forever. And because of you, women held their heads high on May 26th. They walked these streets knowing their power. And as a result, Ireland has changed forever. The old ways of doing politics are dying. This is it. Grassroots, community organizing, enacting social change. You are the future of this movement. Know it, own it, but take responsibility for it. Fight for all the women of the past, the women of the present, and the women of the future. Stand strong and united against barriers in our legislation. Remind those in Dáil Éireann 
that we are still here and we have spoken. This has never been a quiet revolution. Do not become quiet now. Because without you, women will not access care at home in Ireland. Without you, women will face a long list of barriers to the care that they deserve. Mandatory waiting periods, conscientious objection, refusal of care, geographical gaps, the list goes on and on. And without you, we will see delay after delay, barrier after barrier, those most marginalised affected again and again. We can do better. But it will take a fierce and committed feminist community. And luckily, I happen to know of just the people. Do not give up now. Let's finish what we started. In Ireland, we have won a hugely significant battle. Without repealing the Eighth Amendment, we could not provide care for even the few. Now we will continue to fight so that we can provide care for every woman and pregnant person. No one left behind. Together we are strong. We change the face of politics in Ireland and we will continue in our fight for free, safe, legal and local abortion access as our fundamental reproductive right. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah Monahan, legend. <laughs> My name is Denise O'Toole. I stand here today as a woman who's traveled to access abortion, an organizer and an activist. This year, as co-conveners, Sarah and I have had the honor to represent ARC. We're an all-Ireland grassroots feminist campaign for free, safe, legal abortion and to represent all our incredible activists and volunteers. We give thanks to you, to all campaigners nationwide, and to our Irish diaspora. To all who have worked tirelessly this year and every year for appeal and for reproductive rights. All who persisted during dark times, when days like today seemed far away. And who donated to our crowdfund, all of you who made this possible to make this march happen. Give yourselves a clap. No one gets left, oh, pardon me, this change did not come without a huge cost, with many women and their families paying with their lives and health. Today we honour the memories and resolve never to forget for Savita, Miss X, Miss Y, Miss P, Anne Lovett, Michelle Hart, too many to mention, for more than 170,000 women who have travelled and returned to a country and successive governments that had no services, no compassion, that shamed and degraded us. We will continue to campaign for all girls, women and pregnant people who need health care at home. Abortion on demand and without apology! In 2018, there are many current reminders of stark harsh reality where people's human rights are being stripped back and violated daily and that we still have a long way to go to achieve liberation. Sexual violence and church, church and state institutional abuse continue to come to light and survivors' voices must be heard. I believe her! Solidarity! Reproductive rights across the world are under threat and being rolled back in the US, Poland, Argentina and many more. We stand in solidarity with all these activists. When one group achieves their goal and secures their rights, we don't turn our back on our allies and comrades. We call on people to support them as we were supported. Let's continue to make 2018 the year where an unstoppable wave of people power cannot be ignored by the government. The Raise the Roof demo was on the 3rd of October outside Leinster House to demand action on the housing crisis. It's going to be massive. State sponsored violence is not the solution to the housing crisis. Unidentified agents of violence wearing Bally Travis. You're not welcome. No justice.
justice for one and through justice for all. Real change must come from below. Thank you. To celebrate. And people have said we're ghoulish to celebrate. But those of us who have been affected by the 8th directly, we know what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the compassion in the country. We're celebrating solidarity like that here today. Solidarity with women across the world, uh, with pregnant people across the world. And so there are, there are reasons to celebrate. But I was very glad that the lads mentioned all the people that we've lost and the people that are still traveling. And uh, that's why we're here today. Now, and also free balaclavas. So um, some of you are glad you came. <laughs> there are more surprises later. <laughs> there aren't. There are. <laughs> but there are some brilliant speakers. Our next amazing speaker is from Cork. She's from Disabled People for Choice. Evie Nevin is a blogger, disability rights activist, former journalist, and founded Disabled People Together for Yes. Suffering with a rare disease, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Evie has been lobbying and raising awareness about how those with disabilities have been disproportionately affected by the Eighth Amendment. She's currently gearing up to run, oh, she's here, currently gearing up to run in next year's uh, election, local election with the Social Democrats, and Evie's aim, Hello, Sock Dems, that's hello. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, Evie's aim is to represent those with disabilities to improve quality of life in Irish society. Here she is, Evie Nevin. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I had hoped we wouldn't have to be here again, but it's been an honor to be invited here today and to share the stage with some incredible people. People like Tara Flynn and people like Arlette Lyons who shared their stories. And on behalf of myself, my daughter and everyone who voted yes, we thank you for sharing your stories. So on May 26th, everybody was like, it's over now. Stop going on about it, Evie. <laughs> So what they don't realise is that I won't stop. Not until every person in this country has complete freedom over their own bodies. Not until my daughter has a say of her own body. And not until all medical treatment is available at home. At this very moment, there's a pregnant person waiting to board a plane or boat. Maybe it's a mother of two who has found out her much wanted child will not make it to term. Maybe it's a scared college student whose contraception has failed. Maybe it's a trans man who has been sexually assaulted. And maybe it's a person with a disability whose life is at risk. There is someone right now, probably sitting alone, staring at the pills in front of them. And no one knows what they're about to do. They are too afraid and ashamed to tell anyone. So they'll risk their health and they'll suffer alone. And these are what they called the hard cases. But we learned through the story submissions to our page and in her shoes that situations like this are not a rarity. And we know at least one Irish person with a disability travels for an abortion every week. By no means is that rare. It means they will more than likely have to be admitted to an NHS hospital and those appointments are far and few between and extremely expensive for Irish patients. It means they may have to forego this month's medications. It means they may have to forego the rent and struggle to put food on the table. The government tells us that it will be January when the termination of pregnancy bill will be enacted. That means approximately 2,000 pregnant people from May 26th will have travelled or ordered pills online. That is more than the population of women in my hometown of Clonakilty. Our government is showing us that they are not committed to bringing healthcare home. All over this country, there are families like my own who have to travel abroad for medical treatment. Exporting our problems tells people like me, like my children and those facing crisis pregnancies that we don't matter, but we do matter. And I hope you'll join me on October 6th for the still waiting protest to show our government and the agency that we will not stand for it anymore. We will all need medical treatments to be available here at home, not in the UK, not in Spain, not in the Netherlands or the US, but here with the support of the doctors who know us and the comfort of the people who love us. If <laughs> and if our government don't want to sort this mess out, let them step aside and find somebody who will. Thank you. Evie 
Kevin. As we know, migrant women are disproportionately affected by our reproductive laws here. So next we have from the movement Asylum Seekers Ireland, we have uh, Zaz Subindi, who's a refugee and human rights campaigner. She works to spread the message about the barriers to bodily autonomy caused by the direct provision system. Please welcome Zaz Subindi and Noma. said it always seems impossible until it is done many people thought the eighth will never be repealed you came you stood together for yes and the rest is history i am a direct provision survivor i'm here today speaking on behalf of mercy that is the movement of asylum seekers in ireland it is an independent platform for asylum seekers and supporters of asylum seekers to come together in unity and in purpose. Massa seeks basic rights for asylum seekers, including the right to work. It also seeks the eventual... Massa also seeks the eventual abolition of the direct provision system. We gather here today to celebrate your success repealing the AIDS, to acknowledge and recognize the power of standing together, to appreciate the pro-choice movement, abortion rights campaign, the Together for Years groups and individuals who work tirelessly day and night to see this victory. Irish society was changed and at least some of the wrongs of the past righted. <laughs> However, we are also here today because nothing practical has changed. About 10 women a day still have to travel for health care. This number does not include women in direct provision centers. Asylum seekers cannot leave this country while in direct provision system. Therefore, if a woman in direct provision system becomes pregnant and requires abortion services, she, like Miss Y, will not be able to access termination of pregnant services. Her bodily autonomy is completely denied. Remember the story of Miss Y, a young woman who came to Ireland to seek protection. She became suicidal. She realized that she was pregnant as a result of being raped in her country. She needed abortion services and the Irish government denied her that right. For people like her and myself and Norma here, it is vital that abortion services are not just legislated for speedily, but widely available, accessible and free for all. <laughs> There is still a lot to be done until all power, all respect and all dignity is fully given back to all women in Ireland. We must demand that the legislation reflects the promises they made us. We must not forget our sisters in the north and offer solidarity and support to bring in access. You have made this happen for Ireland. Now, make it happen for the women in direct provision centers who are alone, ashamed, and afraid. These women are here in Ireland. They are not in Africa. They are not in Asia. They are not a thousand miles away. These women are alienated. They are powerless. They are out of sight, out of mind. They are denied the right to work. They have no voice, and they need your assistance. You have the power, you have the influence. Let this not be another Magdalene Laundress. <laughs> this is about human rights, the right to 
a woman's bodily autonomy to have control over her body. This is about a legislation that leaves no one behind. And comrades, as Thomas Sankara said, there is no true social revolution without the liberation of women. This next woman on our, uh, our running order is the only underachiever, really. She's uh, just, you know, she's a campaigner, an activist. She's the elected president of the Union of Students in Ireland, representing 374,000 students across the island. You know, no big whoop. Former chair of USI Students for Choice, coordinator of Longford Together for Yes during the 2018 campaign. She's a board member. She's giving me evil. <laughs> You didn't think I'd big you up. <laughs> she is a board member of the Irish Family Planning Association and received a gala last year for her work for the LGBTI plus advocacy. In July, Sheila presented to Planned Parenthood America as well as the US Congressional and Senate policymakers. So a total underachiever. Give it up for Sheila Cal. remain closed. Bl blinds cannot remain shut. Curtains can no longer remain drawn up and down this country. Because we made Brawl the law in 2015, we made Manaw the law in 2018. <laughs> this movement, our movement, has empowered a generation of young people and activists. Thousands of thousands of them are students. It solidified two referendums worth of us, gave us a political education that cannot be taught in a lecture hall. The student movement in Ireland committed to this generation after generation since the 70s and before. We need to remain engaged. We need to continue to challenge, to question, and we need to continue to vote. Students challenged the lack of access to contraception. We went to the court for calling out censorship we built alliances and never gave up because we were traveling. We were taking pills alone too. So students were mobilized, they registered to vote, they canvassed and they campaigned. We reached out in every county and every corner and insisted now is the time for change. But we're sure as hell not stopping here. The Union of Students in Ireland was proud to lead this campaign with students one that challenged us to defy the status quo. But we are at a time when our bodily autonomy is still in question. Our society only now seems to begin the conversation about sexual respect and consent. We have been failing our young people. Yes. This failing has ramifications for all of society. A conversation that is uncomfortable, but one that is needed not just on our campuses. So the campaign to repeal the eighth showed us that we have power over ourselves, over our bodies, and over our futures. A power that we must assert, one that must be demanded, and one that must continue to be protected. So we need to leverage the success of this campaign, the campaign we've had together, for those who were made invisible before it and during it. Because the question I was asked several times this week, why are you still marching, needs to be answered with a strident because we still haven't got what we're looking for. The Union of Students in Ireland is an all-Ireland organisation representing 374,000 students across this island, and I am proud to lead it. But our students and our young people in Northern Ireland cannot be silenced. The North is next. We cannot allow a replacement of planes with buses and trains for our Northern Irish family. So I'll say this, to the social justice warriors among you, to the shrill tweeters, of which there are many, and those ever accused of being a snowflake, 
be difficult, be bold, and continue to resist. Free, safe, legal. See you in the car. I'm glad I had the biggest hurt at the beginning because did you hear having a dig at me at the end? Can't believe it. Um, the North Amber. <laughs> Need to remember how hard our, our sisters, our our friends, our relatives up in the north campaigned with us in forest. They canvassed the border counties. They put pressure on in all kinds of ways. They've come and spoken here at the March for Choice several years. And from Alliance for Choice, we have Kelly O'Dowd and Emma Campbell. Kelly has been an educator, a trade union activist, a feminist campaigner and research and campaign officer. Emma has been an artist, a researcher, a picture editor, photographer, audience development and a campaigner. Together, they have pulled these experiences and passions into the campaign for free, safe, legal abortion access for everyone who needs it in Northern Ireland. Here they are. Give them a huge welcome. From the North! Alliance for Choice, we're so proud to help you deliver a cracking referendum result. And the North will be next. Yeah. We campaign beside you and we can already see the solidarity for our shocking situation in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Shocking! Yeah. We now stand out like a sore thumb or a sore arse in Europe, but not for long. Like everyone here, the only thing we will accept is free, safe, and legal abortion access at home. Yeah. I heard some person say that this was a quiet referendum, or quiet revolution. Does this look like a quiet revolution? I don't think so. The referendum was a bonfire of hope for the rest of the world for all those who campaign for justice and equality. And you might know we like a good bonfire up north. <laughs> we have seen what we can do, but we're only getting started because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Generations of women and activists who have resisted and persisted because we are the persisterhood. We are the persisterhood! We won't stop until we have free, safe and legal abortion for everyone who needs it on this island. And we won't stop until that is true for our siblings the world over. From Argentina to Poland and beyond. So comrades and sisters, many of you came to the North and joined us in June for our processions to show solidarity with the North because the North is next. Well, guess what? We've got another invitation for you. On the 9th of March, we will march through Belfast to mark International Women's Day and demand our abortion rights. And we want to see all ye up North Come on, get on a bus or a train. Because we fundamentally believe no woman left behind, no person left behind. Our bodies, our choice, our time is now. The North is next! Kelly and Emma Campbell, the first sisterhood. Feet. So I think one of the things that has been most amazing about the abortion rights campaign all the way along, long before the referendum was even in sight, was how inclusive they were. So next we're going to hear from the Transgender Equality Network. Um, Andy Martin is Teddy's Administrative Officer, was previously the Welfare Equality Officer for IADT Students' Union, was involved with the Students for Choice campaign. Andy is a, oh, there's Andy. Andy is a trans activist, speaks on trans issues, and wants to see an inclusive legislation for all people who can become pregnant in Ireland. Here's Andy. Hi. Um, so when we talk about abortion and reproductive health care, we have to remember that any person who can become pregnant is affected. 
Trans people, non-binary people, gender fluid people are all affected. We voted that people should be able to make choices over their own bodies. And being denied bodily autonomy is something the trans community can relate to all too well. Any person who can become pregnant, including trans and non-binary people, must be able to access the reproductive health care that we need. We are calling for legislation that is inclusive and wording that gives no possibility of anyone being excluded from accessing abortion services on the basis of gender. If I were to become pregnant, I can't express the intense distress it would cause me because of my identity and discomfort within my own body. It would be absolutely impossible for me. The additional barriers that being trans could put on accessing abortion services could cause further undue stress and anguish. And accessing healthcare as a trans person is already beyond difficult. We understand how important gender affirming healthcare is for trans people. And we will continue to work to make sure that healthcare professionals have a better understanding and knowledge of our lived experiences. We need to do better. We want to see trans and non-binary people treated with dignity and respect in the choices we make over our own bodies. We cannot leave anyone behind. Thank you. Thanks everyone. I'm very sure. Uh, that was Andy Martin. And I think that's a, a great indication of how we all have to keep, we've loads to learn, which keep listening, keep learning, keep making the campaign as inclusive as possible. Keep learning how we can do better for people with disabilities, trans people, everybody who needs it and that there are no barriers at all. Um, I want to just, before I bring on our final speaker, and I'll leave the last word to her really, um, I want to thank everyone for being here today. I want to thank the Abortion Rights Campaign for organizing this incredible march and for everything they've done for years and years, every day often in a thankless way, in an invisible way, and they're just so incredible. So here's the abortion rights campaign! Thank you for today, thank you. Yeah, pat yourselves on the back. You should pat yourselves on the back. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you to everyone who's here today. I've seen people from Doctors for Choice here, Lawyers for Choice, so many volunteers, people who put their whole lives and souls into the campaign for little thanks. But thank you from us all now. Thank you so much. You appeal to the eighth, you're incredible. But before you go anywhere, please, please, please remember that people are still traveling today. People are being helped by the Abortion Rights Campaign, by the Abortion Support Network. Mara Clark is here doing incredible work. But our last speaker is someone that I, I, I admire so much. And um, she's, yeah, I do, I do admire you. I won't flag you off. No, not only she and I. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, she's really spoken to people's hearts and minds. She's gone, shared her own bereavement in an incredible way, up and down the country. And um, she's one of the founders of Termination for Medical Reasons and Land of McCree. In 2012, she had the unfortunate experience of Termination for Medical Reasons, lost her little girl, Skye. She's been campaigning all over Ireland since, sharing her story and looking for lawful terminations and supporting couples and families through the same tragedy she has had. Arlette Lyons is here to speak to you now. so much. Um, thank you, Tara. We love you too. Um, just thank you so much to ARC for inviting myself um, on behalf of myself and TFMR here today. It's like coming a full circle, um, which is just, for me, it's, it's just wonderful. Um, it's like closing a chapter of a horrible part of my life personally, and it just, it feels surreal. Um, I know people are worried about the legislation going through and yes, people are still traveling and all of that, but I personally, and I know all of us in TFMR have full faith in Simon Harris that he will do what he said he will do. He, when we first met Simon Harris, um, we had met other ministers for health who promised everything to us and delivered nothing. Simon Harris has been the first minister that has followed through on everything, small details, bigger details, and I have absolutely faith that he will put this through and come January 2019, we'll all be free at last, thankfully. Um, I'm just gonna keep it short. Um, we just, from myself and TFM Moore, we just wanna say thank you so much to absolutely everybody. Um, when you disclose such a personal part of your life, when you've lost a baby and you've had to travel over to Liverpool and have an abortion, to talk about it is just incredibly hard. 
it's incredibly hard. You know, you really wanted this baby and you were, you know, trying to campaign along with it. And for every horrible thing we have said, have said to us being called baby murderers and killers and, well, you know, all horrible things, we've had thousands of people support and love us. And that's what's kept us going for six years. So thank you so much to everybody, to the likes of Claire Daly, who has been unbelievable from day one again. When, She, Claire is like a powerhouse and I remember meeting her for the first time and you know you're meeting a TD and you think they're all Ooh, really cool and you know but they're just normal but it's since Claire it's like as if Claire went through what we went through she has fought so hard for us through it all and we are so grateful and for every tweet for every message for every single thing that everybody has ever said to us for every hug it really has made the last six years that have been so incredibly hard, it's really made it worth it. And we'd all do it all again, but never, thankfully we never ever will have to. So thank you so much. It's Carlette Lyons. And a huge cheer for all the families of TFMR. And a huge cheer for you for coming out. And as I said, it is the end of one chapter, but it is the beginning of a new one, not just for reproductive rights, but for everything we need in Ireland. The housing crisis, the uh, the health the health system, the screening, we can do, we can address all of that, but we can do it together. But uh, as I say, some of the batons are going to be handed on, but we can do it together. Thank you to ARC, the abortion rights campaign. Today's all about you, celebrating you, thanking you, and uh, let's give them a round of applause. I think we should leave the last word to ARC.